Well, there it is. Hi guys, and welcome to another Warcraft movie video. This is Witty, and this is a video about the Twitch stream last night. Yes, so I saw a Twitch stream called a Warcraft Movie Global Premiere event. So this was an event where they take all of the people that are related to the movie in some way and shape and form and show it off to the stars and the public. They make a big to-do. They shut down a street. I think it's a pretty important street. Can't remember which one it is. And they show it at the cinema. So they had sort of the stars of the show, so to speak, as well as other stars turn up, such as Jamie Lee Curtis later on. And then there's some Blizz, uh, Blizz, Blizz, Blizz developers and such uh, coming in to weigh in their views on the movie and how they're excited about it. So I'm going to go over some timestamps of what happened. If you want to check the video description below, there's a link to the Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash Warcraft. Pretty easy to remember anyway, but they broadcasted it on that so you can watch it as their last broadcast, so I suggest you go and do that. The first half of it, it's an hour and 40 minutes long, the first half is just like talking to random people. I say random. They, they are related to Warcraft in one way or another, but it's more sort of normal people telling their life stories. Whereas if you want to get to the stars and the people that have more to do with the Warcraft story itself, then skip to about 47 minutes onwards, where we're going to start with Toby Kevill, who has a nice honourable Juratan style interview and then after him you have to skip quite a bit for head to 105 for Jamie Lee Curtis where she interviews alongside Jesse Cox so Jesse Cox is doing like the interviews here and she's with her son and they are both cosplayed as two orcs and it's quite cringy a lot of this is cringy to be honest if you want to see some moments that are going to make you go oh but they're still kind of enjoyable, then this is a video that you want to watch. So, like I say, check out the video description below. Seems kind of lazy from me talking about a video that you should go and watch. But my view is some of you might not know about it, so you might be interested in seeing it. I know I would be interested in seeing it if I didn't have it pop up in my email notifications. And the other thing is that there's quite a lot of uh, funny moments that happen in this, and I'm going to go over a few of those moments, but I won't divulge too much because otherwise that will spoil the point of you actually watching it for yourself. But let's say that Jamie Lee Curtis embarrasses her son quite monumentally. He does seem like a mummy's boy. I'm going to give him that. Uh, he seems like a nice guy and everything, but my goodness does he seem molly coddled. She constantly... I think she, during the interview she said, like... She referred to herself as mommy, a mummy... Like four to five times. And these are like one to two minute long interviews. They're not long. So she embarrassed him quite thoroughly. But I don't think he minded too much. He was just excited to be there. And uh, there's, a, there's a bit at the end that they say that harkens back to the old vanilla World of Warcraft days. And it's a yell. I'm not going to say much more than that. But it's cringy but fantastic at the same time. Then we get on to one minute, one minute, one hour and 13 minutes. Which is Rob Kaczynski basically laying down the hammer the doom hammer onto all of those critics and saying that you guys if you enjoy this movie it's for you have a blast he's just fantastic such a down-to-earth guy he really does seem like one of the most fun people to hang out with rob kasinski and i just love how he handled the whole situation and uh, he talked about himself Obviously, if you don't know who Rob Kaczynski is, he plays Orgrim Doomhammer in the movie, and he is a World of Warcraft nerd through and through. Like, he plays non-stop, basically, back in the day, and still, to, even to this day, plays. Which is more than I can say, because I'm currently unsubscribed. I'm still well and truly interested in World of Warcraft, there's no doubt about that, but I currently have no reason to play as it is in Warlords of Draenor. But, when Legion comes out, you better believe I'm going to go nuts for the game again. So... After that, we have 1 hour and 16 minutes. This is a bit more of a cringe one. Ben Schnitzer, who played Kadgar, who a lot of you, I'm sure, liked. And Clancy Brown, who played Black Hand, who was the big bad orc. Not Gul'dan, but the big bad orc. And it's kind of funny because he did talk about a story where all the characters came in to sort of see the renditions of how they would look on the movie because obviously they're recording behind a lot of green screen here. They're wearing mocap suits so that they can be replicated in the virtual world as a giant orc. However, his orc was about one and a half feet smaller than all the other orcs and he made a reference to Joe Pesci who I think is the Goodfellas movie. 
he's one of my favourite characters either way. I'm sure many of you have seen the movie, if it is that rock one. But he's so sort of... He seems small, but my goodness is he intimidating in the movie. He's like, hey, you're looking at me, you're looking at me? You think this is funny? And you, at first you're like, oh, yeah, it's funny. And then, you know, he, he'll fucking kill you, mate. Do not mess with this guy, this Joe Pesci character. So his idea was that, oh, I thought I was going to be playing this massive orc that kind of commands the troops, which he does in the end. But the way he saw it is because his orc, they showed him, this is who you're playing, was one and a half feet smaller. He thought, oh, I'm going to be playing not the biggest, baddest orc, just the craziest, baddest orc that leads the guys. And I kind of almost wish they went with that in the movie. If you could redo it in certain aspects and just have that change, I suppose it would come across a little too comical, but my goodness, that would have been pretty awesome if all of these massive, like, seven to eight foot giant orcs are being led by this tiny orc that's just got one hell of an attitude problem. Fantastic. Alrighty. So, Daniel Wu, who played as Gul Dan, who I really liked in the movie, uh, there's a little interview with him at 1 hour 21 minutes, and you don't get to find out too much about him because he gets ganked by Garona as she um, interrupts the interview, so to speak, and joins in. And we do find out a little bit more about Paula Patton, who does play Garona, uh, at the 1 hour 25 minute mark, as she then has her own separate interview. And she's very flirtatious. She does seem like a lot of fun, that girl, I've got to say. But she seems down to earth, great sort of sense of humor, seems to just be loving life, you know what I mean? Like, she's not taking any of this too seriously, but seriously enough, like, she's there to have fun, but to enjoy the moment as well. So I like her attitude in general, and it's good that she's obviously going to be in the next one because it leads towards that, if there is a next one. At least I assume she would be. I don't want to say too much, but yeah. Anyway, one hour, 26 minutes is Mike Morheim. He's, um... <laughs> I was watching the Twitch stream live at the time, and uh, he's referred to as Dad, or Father, a lot in the Twitch chat comments. It was just hilarious. But it's kind of true. He is like the Dad of Warcraft. He, he's the, the Father, the one that you look up to. He's the creator, so to speak. I mean... Him and Frank Pierce are like the big lads at Blizzard. He didn't necessarily create Warcraft, but he was amongst the team and way and truly the co-founder of Blizzard. Like, he's way up there, if not the highest. Uh, it's arguable as to who is truly the highest in Blizzard. It's between Frank Pierce and Mike Morheim, as far as I understand it. And uh, he seems always nervous, that guy, always nervous. At the BlizzCons, he's much better off, because even though he's still nervous, he has an auto queue. In this, he didn't have an auto queue, so he went to a lot of sort of default answers that seemed a bit political, but it's just a nice guy. You know he's a nice guy. There's no bullshit with this guy. He just doesn't necessarily do all these interviews and that as relaxed or laid back as Rob Kosinski might do. He's just... He's the dad, and you got to love him. So... After this, we do have an interview with Frank Pierce, one hour, 29 minutes, and he's far more diplomatic. But again, he's a good guy. He's just got a totally different personality. He's, he's not the kind of guy that you can easily joke around with, I feel. You kind of get this impression that if you crack a whole bunch of jokes, he's just got a straight face. He's not, like, upset that you told the jokes, but he just he's not on the level that you're on. Do you know what I mean? He's just, they go over, they, he understands them, but he just doesn't acknowledge them as well. I like Frank Pierce, though, because he was you know, very associated. Again, Mike, Mike Morheim, I think, executive, pro executive producer of Warcraft 3. Frank Pierce was the team lead of Warcraft 3, so they're all heavily invested back in Warcraft all, these, all, these, all this time ago, 20-plus years ago, so long ago. But they've been there since the beginning. They were essentially the creators to some extent. Now, we move on to... The Blizz devs, J. Allen Brack, uh, Ian Hasakosis, and Tom Chilton at the 1 hour 31 minute mark, where they talk a little bit about the movie, and they wanted to represent the Horde a little bit more, but the carpet was black. I don't know what that's about. You know how you have these kind of red carpet events? That's the idea. You have the red carpet event, the stars come down, and then enter the, into the movie after having a few interviews and, you know, uh, words with the press. But it was a black uh, carpet. I've not heard of that. I don't know whether that's themed for the movie or they can't do red because that's technically a copyrighted thing for Oscars and stuff like that. I don't know too much about these things. But 
the scenery was quite nice. They had some aesthetics of the Warcraft universe, like a Stormwind Guard, and just some general aesthetics, um, atmosphere, uh, fake rubble and stuff like that. But it, it looked good enough. It was good. So, yeah, they chatted a little bit about their experience with Warcraft, how they related to it, and how it's exciting to see the movie. Not a bad little conversation with them. I always like Ian Hasekosis. It's, he's a fascinating man. Uh, he talks a lot, but what he talks is a lot of sense for the most majority of the time. He's, he's very sort of down to earth, but he's also weighed down, I feel, a lot by the pressure of the peers above him. That if he could, I wish, I bet he wishes he could sort of like unleash a bit more of his true opinion as to where Warcraft stands right now, World of Warcraft and things like that. But he still has to be diplomatic and, you know, political about these things. But he does give you, for the most most part, you know, a good, honest, straight-up answer to your question when it's Warcraft-related. He's very easy to approach in that sense, I find. Okay, and then the last part is the 1 hour 33 minutes, which is the interview with Duncan Jones. Now, this guy seems like the most awesome guy ever, doesn't he? Seriously, have you checked him out? He's just, he just seems so lovable and just so friendly and charismatic and smart as well. He's, he's just got a lot of good qualities going for him. And it was really just nice to hear from him and his experiences on the set. He's very open with how things feel and he just wants you to go and watch it and support it, which makes sense because if you do, then there's quite likely to be a second one. Now that brings me on to another point, which is probably a video for another day, which will come up soon, I suppose. We'll have to see how uh, things go and whether I can monitor or find a way as to how much money the Warcraft movie makes. I think you have to wait a week or two before you can get the official figures. I'm not really an expert at this, so I'm just kind of discovering myself. But if I do find out, I'll let you guys know in a video. But I was writing on to China. I know you guys are going to want to hear about that sort of like opinion. I'm super excited about it. I did mention in the previous video that I think China's going to have a large impact and they've already had a large impact with their pre-sales and still technically doesn't come out until the 10th. Of course, it's the 8th today. So this premiere event was a bit odd to me because it was in America, I'm pretty sure, because a lot of the cars and that were American, so I don't think they all shipped off to another country just to go see the premiere. I don't think so. So it's definitely America. But it was premiered on the 7th where they're supposed to get it on the 10th, so... I, I guess because it's like a special thing. Like, in Britain, we were supposed to get it on, like, the 3rd of June, technically, but for some reason, there's a preview version or something like that, which is essentially the movie, on the 30th of May, which is when I went and saw it. So maybe it's the same sort of deal. You get it a few days early. So they get it on the 7th. I'm still baffled how America got it later, because typically America always get everything first. So I bet they're really butthurt about that. Sorry, fellas, not this time. You're going to have to wait for your Warcraft, but you will enjoy it if you are into Warcraft. I can guarantee you that. Just don't go in with too high hopes, expecting all of your lore, you know, dreams to be met, because that might not necessarily be the case, but you're going to have a good time with this anyway. So, that said, there's a few things I think were missing. I'm not sure whether they were supposed to be coming down, there wasn't enough time. But we were missing some stars, Travis Fimmel, who plays Anduin Lofer. Uh, ben Foster, who plays Medivh, and Dominic Cooper, who plays King Lane. We didn't get any interviews with them, so I don't know whether they turned up at all or what, because the stream was only an hour and 40 minutes. I'm not sure exactly if they were going to start, you know, the, the movie, like, right after the, it ended. Don't know. But either way, we didn't see them. And the Blizzard developers that I would have loved to have seen an interview with, or just even seen at the event, but again, don't know whether they were late, whether they turned up already, or they just didn't get interviewed. Chris Metzen, obviously a biggie, slightly responsible for much of the Warcraft universe, so having an interview with him would have been very important, and maybe we'll get that at one stage. Samwise Didier, who was the art leader uh, of... Warcraft 3, and very responsible for a lot of the art throughout the Warcraft, fi um, not films, yet, uh, Warcraft movie. No. Games. My goodness, the Warcraft movie part has taken over. They had games? I thought it was just movies. No, he's super talented, 
Samwise Didier. He's created Illidan and all these other amazing characters for Warcraft. And I would have loved to have heard his opinion. I know these interviews are done before they've seen the movie, so they can't come back to you and say, oh, well, you know, I thought this looked like my characters, like how I designed them, because he hasn't seen the movie yet. But they've seen cuts and edited drafts, maybe even almost finished versions, but not true finished versions, I don't think. Not the true, true product. So it would have been great to hear from Samwise Didier. Again, like Chris Metzen, hopefully we hear from him at some point. Now, the other fella was Chris Sagatti. Now, a lot of you might not necessarily know him, but he's like the rocking guy with the super long straight hair. And he's very um, responsible for a lot of what went on in Warcraft 3. Just seems like a great guy, generally speaking. Again, I've seen a lot of him interviews in uh, BlizzCon, sort of like... I would have just liked to have known what his opinion was of the whole movie and where it's going. He's tied down, I think, with StarCraft 2 a lot of the time. Maybe even Heroes of the Storm, I think he got put on that team. He's a bit all over the place, but if they went back towards Warcraft 4, he would quite likely be part of it. So, again, I would, I'm would i obviously biased because of Warcraft 3, but I would like to have heard of his responses and just an interview with him. So I missed out on those guys, but otherwise, the stream was fun. If you just want to cut to those parts that I put, that I talked about, I will put those also in the video description. So those are the parts that I thought were interesting. Generally speaking, just watch from 47 minutes onwards or an hour and five minutes onwards if you're not too worried about Toby Kebble. Um, yeah, that's it. So hopefully you guys go and watch it. Let me know what you guys think of the stream, how cringy you found it, and what you, uh, well, just what you think. All right then, guys, take care. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.